Hi guys, I hope you're having an awesome day and a good Sunday. Yesterday was a little rough, but we made it through. It's always good to have some prayer warriors with you on your side as you battle things of the unseen world. I'm going to start off in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 19 through 27. And my title is called Servanthood, and I'm going to break this up in two messages. Because it was kind of long. Reminder, G and let's pray. Jesus, help us to be servants of you, Father. To serve others. To not be selfish, but to be kind and joy and love others today. Think of ways how we can serve. And Jesus, light up the way, Father. I pray for demons to flee out of homes and out of your kids. I pray for protection everywhere you go this week and today from the evil enemies, the demons, and the things that we cannot see. He's with you, and I pray that, Lord, you speak to me. Give me the voice to speak to these people today. I love you. Amen. All right, I'm going to stand up for the verse. Verse. Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. Isn't that cool? Awesome. Even though I'm a free man with no master, I've become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like the, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I'm not subject to the law, I did this so I can bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God, no matter what, Whoever you're witnessing to or serving, you always have to obey the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I'm with those who are weak, maybe you're helping someone that's weak and hurting, I share their weaknesses, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and to share in its blessings. Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? Sure, run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. Run with purpose in every step today. He's not the author of confusion. Your guilt. I discipline my body like an athlete training to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I might, I myself might be disqualified. Isn't that awesome? I'm going to scoot this up a little bit so I can have a seat. Let's see if I can still sit and do it. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So... So I'm trying to get the glare. All right. I have some keys to uh, show you guys or tell you guys. Key number one, be a servant to all. But don't ignore the, lo the law of God. Obey the law. Two, find common ground with everyone and do everything you can to save some. Run with purpose in every step. Seek an eternal price. Turn your spiritual man to do good today. I have a note here. Together we are better children of the Most High God. We're here to serve others. Pick up our cross daily and follow Christ. Number five, live a life of purpose. Have tr where you train and have goals. Don't try to quit 
Don't quit. Try, try again. Don't give up. Let go and let God work. Be silent still. No noise and clatter. He just wants you to be silent and let him speak to you. Release it to the Father today. Your guilt, you feel guilty, but your, what your sins are washed by the blood of his sacrifice. Matthew chapter 10, 38 through 39. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But you, if you give up your life for me, you will, you will find it. That's just what I was just saying. Take up your cross and follow Christ today. You're not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. If you cling to the, this, the things in this world, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Give up your life for Christ today. Have him center of your heart, and he will give you all the rest. Remember the first scripture. Even though I'm a free man with no master, I become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. That's our purpose. Your sons and daughters of the Most High God today. Just okay. You will have an eternal resting place with Father today. I was just re uh, studying John yesterday, the book of John. And after watching a lot of the videos and stuff, I come to realize, you know, Jesus says, I speak of what God gives me to speak when he was going around performing his miracles. I did not... It's not me and my voice that says what I, I say. But Jesus says, it's God telling me what to say. If it was any way else, I wouldn't get I w God wouldn't get glory and I would get glory. So it's important when we speak to minister to people that it's the Holy Spirit speaking for me to you guys for Him to get the glory and not me. And I was, after re watching some of the videos, he was like, this man don't even have a, a degree. Or, you know, go to seminary or anything. He said, and Jesus says, you know, my wisdom comes from the Father God, my Father God, who is the best wisdom to give. I have some scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 through 9. Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. I had to talk to you as though you belonged to this world or as though you were infants in Christ. And that goes back to the first scripture i given you about share, share the weaknesses of the people that you're trying to help. Share in their weaknesses so you can bring them closer to Christ. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger. And that goes to think, you know, we are to pick up our cross daily. And you still aren't ready for you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You're, you were jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove you're controlled by your sinful na nature? Are you jealous all the time of what other people... I know it, it's hard right now, like with money and even getting food and gas, you know. But things will be lifted up higher. You will get a blessing. Just don't give up. And we look on social media and stuff of all the people that are doing this and that and that. And it hurts and it stings inside you. I know how that feels. But don't give up and don't be controlled by your sinful nature. Doesn't that prove you're controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? When one of you says, I am a follower of Paul, and another says, I am 
I follow Apollos. Aren't you acting like people of this world? After all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants to whom you believe the good news. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it. But it was God who made it grow. It was not... It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together. Together we're better in Christ. And both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers. What you harvest and plant, it will grow He's a miracle working God. And you are God's and you are God's field. You are God's building. I'm gonna say that again. You are God's field. And you are God's building. Let me turn this off. Okay. Spiritual level. People are on different levels. New Christians need milk like infants. Some people aren't ready to for all the wisdom, so they're not ready for that solid food. Are you still controlled by your sinful nature? Then you're going to need to be fed by, with milk. He's going to soften your heart. Give you faith. That song comes to me. Give me faith. I pray God gives you the faith. Then feed people that are new, still controlled by their sinful nature. Feed them with spiritual milk and not solid food. 2 Corinthians 5, 20-21 So we are Christ ambassadors working together. together. If we're watering, if we're planting, we're all working in God's field and we're all building. But it's important He makes it grow through the power of the Holy Spirit, not by our own will. So we are Christ ambassadors. God is making his appeal to us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin. So that would, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Jesus is divine. And this is John 15. And God's really been putting me a lot in John. The miracles, the baptisms, it is amazing. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. If he sees you're not producing fruit, he's going to cut off the branch. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. So your, so your branches that are producing little fruit, he's going to prune them back. And that's going to produce more. The cutting and the pruning process hurts. Anytime you cut, it, it leaves a mark. It hurts. There's tears. But keep faith and keep your focus on your eternal price. He who waits, be patient, is going to get a blessing. Harvest. you already been pruned and purified by the message. I've given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Let me fix my microphone. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want. I'm going to say that again. If you remain in me, in Christ, and my words, Jesus' words, remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, we're called to produce much fruit. Remember that. 
were ambassadors for Christ, producing much fruit. You are my true disciples. Then bring great glory to the Father. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey in my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is what my commandment. Love each other the same way I loved you. And sir, being a servant has to do... You have to love people. The, be a gardener. Plant. And God will help it grow. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. You are my friends if you do what I command, says Jesus. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide, confide in his slaves. Now you're my friends since I've told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. There's that fruit again. So if he sees that you're not growing fruit, he's going to cut it. If he sees you're doing little fruit, he's going to prune it back. So the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. In James 1, 5-8, and God's a generous God. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will give you favor. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Make sure it's not for selfish ambitions and for your own selfish desires. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. And they are unstable in everything they do. And as I've been studying John, when Jesus was speaking, he said, Some don't even come to the realization, come to terms with God, um, to Jesus, until they see miracles. They just won't listen. You can tell them, you can preach it, you can... They're in the wilderness and they're going through the same thing over and over again. But the same miracles that Jesus did will even do greater. Take a leap of faith. Get out of your normal today. Get away from your normalcy. I'm reminded in Proverbs 15, 1 through 4. Let me see what time I'm at. Okay. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing, but the mouth of a fool belts, belches out foolishness. The Lord is watching everywhere, keeping his eye on both the evil and the good. Gentle words are a, free, are a tree of life. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Soft, kind. I know sometimes people just on small little threads and you just want to rash out. But that's when you step back and ask God to help you. Release that anger today. Expect the unexpected and let go and let God in. Come to Jesus' table, all sinners. Come dine with him. 2 Corinthians 4, 8-18 we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. You are not crushed. The troubles you're going through will not crush you. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. You're not going to be driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. And that just happened to me yesterday, me and the kids. You know, hunted down by spiritual entities that aren't of this world. But we are not abandoned by God. And we have to remember that. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. You will not be destroyed. When you fall, get back up and rise stronger. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share the death of Jesus. So that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, 
We love, live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God, so I spoke. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, God's grace will reach more and more people. There will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For Our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that outweighs them all and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather fix our eye, gaze on things that we cannot, cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone and dissipate. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Remember, you might feel bruised and hurt, but you are not crushed. You're not driven to despair, and you're never abandoned by God. Get fundamentals of God's word first, milk, then go to the solid food. Then it will start spewing out his word. Go be disciples, amen. And I got a song lyrics for you, Strong Tower by Cutlass. When I, when I wander through the desert and I'm longing for my home and I'm crying and I'm in tears, all my dreams have gone away astray. When I'm stranded in the valley and I'm tired and alone and I'm at the edge of giving up, it seems like I've lost my way. I go run into your mountain where your mercy sets me free. You are my strong tower, your shelter over me. Beautiful and mighty, everlasting King, you are my strong tower, fortress when I'm weak. He's your strong tower and fortress right now. Your name is true and holy, and your face is all I see. In the middle of the in the middle of my darkness, in the midst of all my fear, you're my refuge and my hope. When the storm of life is raging, and the thunder's all I hear. You speak softly to my soul. Now I'm running to your mountain where mercy sets me free. Remember, you are my strong tower. He's your st strong tower, a shelter over you. Beautiful and mighty, everlasting king. Matthew chapter 6, 33-34 Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. And that word righteously speaks to me a lot. And he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. He will furnish all your needs. Today's trouble is enough for today. In the Psalms 84, 10 through 12, a single day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than to live the good life in the homes of the wicked. For the Lord God is is our sun and our shield. He is your sun and your shield today. Your strength, your strong tower. He's strong tower. He's your refuge, protection. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. O oh Lord of heaven's armies, what good joy for those who trust in you. In Psalms chapter 91 those who live, in, let me get a drink real quick. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. And He rescued us yesterday, last night. He will cover you with his feathers, and he covered us. 
He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that fly at day, in the day. Do not dread the diseases that stalk in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. They tried to dig their hooks in us yesterday, but it didn't work. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet, the Lord says. I will rescue those who love me. I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Together we're better. Remember that. United in Christ. We will weather the storm together. Christ army. In John 15, 16-17, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. Lasting fruit, remember that. So that the Father will give you whatever you asked for. This is my command, love each other. So you can get that lasting fruit. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who, and remember, you're not abandoned by God. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. As you trust Him, you will find your strength. They were. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not go weary. They will walk and not go faint. Last scripture, Jeremiah chapter 3, 14 through 18. Return home, you wayward children, says the Lord, for I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, one from this town and two from that, that family, from whatever you, from wherever you were scattered, and I will give you shepherds after your own heart. Who will guide you in knowledge who will guide you with knowledge and understanding? And when you land and when your land is once more filled with people, says the Lord, you will prosper. You will no longer wish for the good old days. When you press when you possess the ark of the Lord's covenant, you will not miss those days or even remember them. And there will no and there will be no need to rebuild the ark. And that day Jerusalem will be known as the throne of the Lord. All nations will come to honor the Lord. All nations will come to honor the Lord. They will no longer stubbornly follow their own evil desires. In those days, the people of Judah and Israel will return together from exile in the north. They will return to the land I gave, the, gave your ancestors as your inheritance forever. And I'm going to be doing servanthood part two soon. Probably right after this one. I'm right at 30, almost 30 minutes. I'm doing good. Father, this is a reckless, reckless generation. You know our hurts and our hearts. You know our stresses. But we humbly come before you today and surrender to be your servant. It takes di daily dying sometimes to survive. We are crucified with Christ, but it is, it is he that lives in me and us. We are to be stewards of men. Shepherds leading the sheep to pasture. Who am I that the highest king will love me so much and erase my guilt and my sin? At Calvary's Hill. You're worth more to Him than you can imagine. You're tempted to give up, but please don't give up. You're hurting and you're crushed, but you're hurting inside, but remember you're not crushed and you're not to be led by despair. I'm humbly and serve others today. Come to the cross and be forgiven. 
He will make the slate clean in the name of Jesus. I love you. Like, share, comment, tell others about my videos. Um, I will pray for you to send me a message on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. Um, text me if you have my number and, and with a specific prayer request. And I will pray for you. And I believe truly that just like the book of John, that the same works Jesus did with healing the blind and turning water into wine. And um, the paralyzed man just trying to get to the water to be healed. Lots and lots of miracles with this, the guy's son being healed. It's just so amazing the works he did with calming the seas. Fed all the uh, 5,000 men with just a few loaves of bread and a few fish. Remember, miracles happen. Ask and I will pray for you. And I truly believe that God will answer your prayers. Love you. Have an awesome, amazing day. Enjoy the Super Bowl.